I've always been drawn to the peculiar and the macabre. It was no surprise to anyone when I started working the night shift at the city morgue. The pay was decent, and the solitude of the night was perfect for a loner like me. But what I encountered in the depths of that morgue would haunt my dreams forever. My duties were straightforward. Prepare the bodies for autopsy, assist the pathologist, and maintain the facility's cleanliness. It was a somber job, but I was comfortable in my silence, surrounded by the dead who couldn't judge or question me. One frigid winter night, as I was finishing my routine, I heard a faint rustling from the far end of the morgue. I froze, my breath visible in the chilled air. This place was never anything but silent, save for the hum of the refrigeration units. I hesitated for a moment before cautiously making my way toward the source of the sound. As I approached one of the steel gurneys, I noticed a body bag that seemed to be shifting, as if something were moving inside it. My heart pounded in my chest, and my palms grew clammy. It couldn't be possible. Bodies don't move, especially not in the morgue. With a deep breath, I unzipped the bag, revealing the pale, lifeless face of the deceased. It was Miss Simmons, an elderly woman who had passed away peacefully in her sleep, or so I thought. Her eyes, previously closed in eternal rest, were wide open, staring into nothingness. Her lips curled into a grotesque smile, exposing yellowed teeth. My heart raced as I realized the truth. In a panic, I stumbled backward, knocking over trays and equipment. Miss Simmons' body, writhed and contorted, slowly rising from the gurney. Her movements were unnatural like a marionette being pulled by invisible strings. I was trapped, alone in the morgue with a living corpse. She shuffled toward me, her eyes never leaving mine. I could smell the sickly sweet stench of formaldehyde mixed with something else, something foul and putrid. With each step her body seemed to decay further, bits of flesh peeling away, exposing bone and sinew. I wanted to scream, to run, but fear held me in place. Miss Simmons reached out with skeletal fingers and I felt an icy grip on my wrist. Her grip was surprisingly strong and I knew I had only moments before whatever was left of her would consume me. With a surge of adrenaline, I wrenched myself free and bolted for the exit. As I burst into the corridor, gasping for breath, I heard a chorus of agonized moans emanating from the morgue behind me. I slammed the heavy steel door shut and leaned against it, my heart still pounding. I was shaken and terrified, but I knew I had to do something. I re-entered the morgue cautiously. Their faces were pale and ashen. Miss Simmons had come back to life, but I dismissed it as a hallucination, a trick of the dim lighting and the morgue's eerie atmosphere. I was left feeling bewildered and afraid, doubting my sanity. I couldn't explain what had happened, but I knew what I had seen. With all the excitement and adrenaline wearing off, I found myself hungry like I'd never felt, and it seemed the freshly arrived smelled sweet and inviting. Perhaps I'll have myself a tasty dessert.